Hi everyone, in this uh, next couple of videos I want to talk about uh, specifically the ideal gas equation which remember um, as you'll see in a second comes about from the combining the empirical gas laws that we talked about in the previous videos and we'll also talk a little bit about gas density at the end of the concept of ideal gas equation. So first off I want to start by reminding you of the different um, empirical gas laws that we talked about, Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's law, and we also of course have uh, Gay-Lussac's law. And what it is is that you'll notice that in all of those relationships you have, you know, in Boyle's law P relating to V in an inverse uh, way. In Charles' law we have V relating to T. In Gay-Lussac's, remember it was P relating to T in, uh, again, direct proportionality like this. And then in Avogadro's we have V relating to n number of moles in a direct proportionality. If you put all of these things together, what you find is that you get an equation that looks like this, where P uh, V over N T is equal to a constant. Okay? Okay, so here I'm just writing that um, relationship. So remember that P and V are inversely proportional, and then P and T are directly proportional. So if P goes up, T goes up. V and T, of course, also directly proportional, and then V and N are also directly proportional. So when you combine all of these things together, what you get is you can take this PV over NT, and that has to be equal to a constant, okay? That constant is what we call R, which is the, uh, uh, or the described as the universal gas constant, uh, because that's true for all kinds of gases. And you can actually calculate the value of R from experimental conditions uh, such as STP. So remember we talked about STP in the previous video and that is that pressure has to equal to one atmosphere, temperature has to equal to 273 Kelvin, uh, and then at that particular condition if you have one mole of a gas its volume is going to be equal to 22.4 liter. Okay. So then what you can do is you can use this to calculate R because R is just equal to PV over NT. In other words, you would just plug in one atmosphere. Um, volume will be 22.4 liters. N would be one mole. And then T would be 273 Kelvin. If you plug all these numbers into the calculator, what you get is the following number, 0 0.0821 or 2 six but usually I just run this to one liter atmosphere is the unit on top and mole Kelvin is the unit at the bottom and that's what the value of R is in units of liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin you see later on when we talk about energy quantities um, at the latter part of this chapter that we would also use R uh, in a different value and that is 8.314 and that's, in that case it will have a unit of joules per mole Kelvin but we'll actually derive this uh, at that point and do a little unit conversion in order to be able to take us from this number to that number but basically that's what the value of R would be 0 0.0821 and as you can see I just did this using the STP condition which is an experimental condition okay so just the same way as all the um, other empirical gas laws, the simpler gas laws, you can also use the ideal gas equation in various conditions because remember that this ratio of PV over NT has to equal to that same constant whether you do this experiment in condition number one or condition number two. So that's what we have here. You can write this as P1 over uh, P1 V1 over N1 T1. That's condition number one equals has to equal to some condition number two where it's expressed as P2 V2 over N2 V uh, T2, and that all has to equal to R. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is. Uh, walk through a little bit of an example here um, of using that ideal gas equation and this is um, an example where you for example you have a bubble that comes in from the bottom of the lake um, so you have a small gas bubble a lot of times underneath the ocean or a lake you usually have sources of gas that comes out from the um, uh, in from the earth's core and these uh, gases they tend to bubble up of course because they're less dense than 
uh, water, so they're going to bubble up to the surface of the water. And this is really a, a kind of situation of the sort that's just that I just described. So in this case, the temperature and pressure initially are eight degrees Celsius, fairly cold, six point four. Um, atmosphere of pressure very high obviously because we're underneath at the bottom of the lake when the bubble uh, reach the surf reaches the surface of the uh, uh, lake temperature has gone up to 25 degrees the pressure is now one atmosphere the question is what is the final volume in this case of the bubble if its initial volume was 2.1 milliliters fairly small volume now we want to know what is the volume at the time it reaches the surf the uh, surface of the lake right okay the top of the uh, lake in this case so what we're going to do with these type of problems with uh, ideal gas equation is just kind of write out the conditions that we have before and after a particular process in this case we were told that we have our bubble initially it has a temperature of eight degrees celsius um, and then this is t1 and then we have pressure one which is fairly high 6.4 atmosphere and then we have um, the first volume, uh, initial volume, it was 2.1 milliliters. And then we have temperature 2, which is um, 25 degrees Celsius. And then we have uh, pressure 2 at the surface of the lake, which is just one atmosphere. Okay. And the question that we're asked is volume 2. Now remember that before we do anything, let's convert this uh, to Kelvin first, because we want to make sure that our calculations are done in Kelvin so this is 281 and 298 kelvins respectively for the initial and final temperature now the question you should ask is that if you have a lake here okay and your bubble starts from the bottom of the lake as it goes up we assume that the bubble remains the same bubble so in other words the bubble might change in shape here may get bigger we'll have to calculate that volume or smaller we don't really know but what I want to point out here is that notice that the n which is the number of moles of gas inside this bubble remains the same because you basically have that same gas um, so the number of particles of gas remains the same so in other words n1 is equal to n2 in this case okay so then if you were to write out your ideal gas equation remember that PV equals uh, I'm mean, sorry PV over NT equals to R but in this case we have conditions 1 and that has to equal to P2 V2 over N2 T2 and all of these has to equal to your gas constant I just said that N1 and N2 are equal to each other that means that they will cancel out so then we're left with just P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2 we're trying to solve in this case for volume 2 so I'm going to separate this out from the rest of the equation and write this out okay so it'll be P1 V1 over T1 that's one side of the equation times the uh, inverse of this value which is then just T2 over P2 okay so that's really where uh, things are going to be and then I have to now um, calculate and plug in numbers and then calculate them okay so let's do that I'm gonna just drag this down a little bit so I'm gonna plug these numbers in here um, starting with my P1 V1 T1 okay so the P1 is 6.4 atmosphere the um, uh, volume 1 in this case is 2.1 milliliters uh, temperature 1 in this case is 281 Kelvin okay so that's appropriate units and then the second factor T2 is 298 Kelvin and then I have uh, one atmosphere as the second pressure now you notice what happens is all the correct units cancel out kelvins and atmosphere leaving me with just units of milliliter okay so this is 2.1 uh, milliliter so that I just need to calculate this yeah I want to point out that if you were to calculate it you should get a number of uh, value of around 14.3 milliliters okay okay so going back now to the example that we just finished that's one way you can use the ideal gas equation um, to solve that particular problem and in the problem set that we'll work through in class we'll see a few more of these type of problems maybe a little bit more complex requiring to you know think through the problem a little bit more 
Um, I want to continue in the next video discussing a little bit about gas density and how we can use the ideal gas equation um, to derive uh, expression for density of gases.